There are many strange borders in the world. Many of them are because of conflict, some of them are because of culture, and some just doesn't make sense. Today we will look at small enclave named Kabinda in Angola, which is separated from mainland Angola by Democratic Republic of Congo. It all started in year 4082, when explorer named Diogo Kao discovered Congo River. In 4083, they found Kingdom of Congo near the river, which was one of the biggest kingdoms in the area. Around this time, they also found Kingdom of Ngoyo and Kingdom of Kakongo, which were kingdoms located in present-day Kabinda. Between years 1884 and 1885, there was Berlin Conference, which was an agreement between colonizing European nations about how to divide up Africa. In this conference, Portugal made claim over almost all of South Africa. However, most of this land wasn't administrated by Portugal, so other countries didn't support this claim. Only land administrated by Portugal was this. But Portugal didn't want to lose Cabinda and because of it, in February of 1885, they signed Treaty of Simulambuco with the Nagoya Kingdom. This meant that this area now named Cabinda was now Portuguese protectorate. Around 1920, borders of Angola have been established and Cabinda was now treated as part of Angolese colony. But Portuguese constitution distinguished between colony of Angola and Cabinda until 1956, when the administration of Cabinda was transferred to governor of Angola. However, in 1961, Portugal colonial war started. A huge protests and riots against Portugal began in all Portuguese colonies, including Angola. In Cabinda, there were some smaller separatist groups or organizations that were fighting against Portugal, but in 1963, three organizations, Mlek, Kaung and Aliama, merged to form FLEC, Front for the Liberation of Enclave of Cabinda. Devastating war between Portugal and Portuguese colonies ended after 13 years in 1974 when military coup overthrew dictatorship in Portugal and declared end to war. In January of 1975, Treaty of Alwar was signed between Portugal and three groups in Angola, FNLA, MPLA and UNITA, making Angola independent country. However, Flock and some other organizations in Cabinda rejected this treaty, mostly because they wanted to be independent from Angola. This treaty was going to be active from 11 November in 1975, so Angola wasn't still fully independent almost a whole year after the treaty was signed. But when the treaty started to be active, Fleck created provisional government in 1 August in 1975, led by Henry Nzita Tiago and Republic of Cabinda was created, even though Cabinda was treated as province of Angola. This republic didn't last too long, as invasion of Cabinda by Angola started in 8 November in 1975 and ended in 4 January in 1976. This also started the war known as Cabinda War between Angola and Fleck. Fleck then broke into three factions, Fleck Rank Frank, Fleck Nzita and Fleck Lubota. In 1979, another group named Popular Movement for Liberation of Cabinda split from Fleck. Fleck then received help from UNITA, political party in Angola which also fought against Portugal in Portuguese colonial war. Then another faction named Communist Committee of Cabinda left Fleck in year 1988. Original Fleck was recreated in 1990s and two factions named Fleck Renovanda and Fleck Fac were created. During these years, many people were killed or kidnapped. For example, between 10th and 20th June in 1997, over 100 people were killed during clashes in Cabinda. In December of 2002, Angola announced capture of Flag and in 2006, case fire between Flag and Angola was signed. Flag Fuck is still fighting for its independence. More than 30,000 people were killed during this war and the war still continues. I also wanted to say that I'm completely neutral in this conflict and I'm very interested about future of Cabinda and Angola. If you want to know something more about Africa, you can watch this video about Eswatini or this video about Mauritania. Thanks for watching.